I'm Ken Harbaugh, host of Warriors in Their Own Words. A quick note before we start. In my standard intro to this show, I talk about our mission of presenting the unvarnished, unsanitized truth of what we have asked of those who defend this nation. Today, you'll hear from someone who never served in the American military, but is on the front lines of a battle against tyranny. A few weeks ago, Nikolai, I'm not using his last name, was a financial analyst wearing a suit and tie. Today, he's wearing body armor, carrying an AR-15, and manning a checkpoint in a Ukrainian city under siege by Russian invaders. We talk about his country's struggle to hold the line, but whether we admit it or not, this is America's fight too. This is the free world's moment to stand up to tyranny. If Ukraine falls, democracies everywhere will be under threat, from the nearby Baltic states to Taiwan. You may hear a lump in my throat at times as I ask Nikolai about what he is facing, because I know what awaits him when this conversation ends and he returns to his post. And because he, as much as anyone I've interviewed for this show, is indeed among those who defend this nation. Thank you. Nikolai, hello. This is Ken Harbaugh. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for joining us today. Can you tell us uh, where you are now? Are you allowed to share that information? Um, first of all, um, many thanks to everyone who organized this call and to you podcast that invited me and gave me this opportunity to tell you listeners about what is going on my country now. Right now, I am uh, patrolling the city and calling from my post. I have a little pause from power. I've, uh, you know, this is, it's a city of millions in the south of Ukraine. It has a rich 200 years history, a major lake seaport, and a beautiful culture with a very hospitable residents. Can you describe the unit that you are serving in? Are they volunteers? Is it a professional unit? Um, after my family fled to Safety, I tried to, to join a volunteer military organization. It's called here a Territorial Defense Force. If only people could see the videos and photos, a huge quiz at military registration offices and the lines of volunteers and blood donors. It was the fourth day of the war. And that moment, all volunteer sports were closed. But I am a gun owner, and my help has required to protect the city. My main call to action was uh, hearing the sounds of sirens and explosions as they echoed through the city day and night. The case of saboteur attacks on military facilities and state authorities in the city continues to inspire volunteers like me to fight back. Most of volunteers also carry personal weapons, but there are people among us who just come with the kitchen knives and bed. Um, we all come from different walks of life. Some of us are officers, while others are sailors or self-employed. We are all different face and skin colors, but the one thing that unites us is all is a will to protect our land, people, and our values. Where were you, Nikolai, on the first day of the war? And what were your thoughts when you heard that Russia had invaded your country? Mm, on the first day of war, uh, like many of I was at home and uh, about to go to work. I work near the strategic facility and several missiles hit there. So it was dangerous to go to work. Uh, there has been a lot of discussion about the invasion, and everyone was holding, waiting for more news about the situation. I truly did not believe uh, that that could happen because it would be a 
suicide mission. But even unfold, I quickly went through all five stages of grief. Afterwards, I immediately started thinking what about uh, what I would have to do. It was honestly shocking now, quickly, my life changed. I went from being a financial executive, wearing suits every day, and one moment I stay a soldier with a bulletproof vest and then have a AR-15. I would do anything to return my life before this happened and to have my family by my side again. But for now, I must do my duty and protect my country. Where is your family, Nikolai? Are they safe? My family right now in the United States with my relatives. Nikolai, how is the morale of your unit and what has been your toughest day so far? Our uh, well, morale is very high. We all feel a great sense of pride because we are fighting against the tyrannical forces that are trying to destroy our beautiful country. Ukraine also have a great sense of humor, which also really helps with morale. Um, the third day was the uh, hardest, I think. I had uh, to take my family to the Romanian border so they, they could be safe. Uh, as, uh, as we drove to this, uh, those empty roads, we noticed broken street scene and the destruction that the Russian forces case. Uh, there was also a great risk of getting bombed since we were out in the open. We were scared, but we didn't give up. Have there been moments when you feared that the Russians might win? Mm, perhaps on the first of, or second days of the war, um, they were doubts about our victory. But I knew we would never go down without a fight. Now I'm optimistic and I'm positive that Ukraine will prevail. I think how strong our forces are and the international support has given me hope. Even if I'm not a military expert, um, I still do my job to the best of my abilities. Like many of us, I must do it well for my sake of my country. Our shared patriotism and courage unites uh, us even in these dark times, which gives uh, me hope for the future. What is it like fighting on your own soil, and what advantages has that given you in confronting the, uh, the invaders? The main advantage is that basically the whole world is supporting our country. This is really motivating and help us fight this battle against evil. History has shown that the good side always wins and uh, gives us the courage we need to fight back. I've never had this experience like this before. Mm, I'm not a military. Even if uh, it can be difficult at times, I'm proud to be fighting for my land for the first time. It's like fighting for your family, for your loved ones, for justice, for truth, for freedom, for everything that is dear to you. This might sound a bit, little bit corny, but this is the battle between good and evil. Nikolai, what is your assessment of Russian forces, their training levels and motivation? As I said before, I'm not a military expert, but their forces seem weak and unorganized, uh, despite their size. Uh, they say that they have one of the strongest army in the world, but the data doesn't match reality. Uh, they have a huge logistic problem, 
they greatly overestimated their strength. They assumed that they could easily take over Ukraine in two days, but they were wrong. In fact, the invasion turned out to be a one-way ticket. In three weeks, our armed forces destroyed a sort of invading forces. And now a lot of Russian troops lost their motivation. Many are afraid and have begun to desert the army. Others have tried to take revenge by killing our civilians. But we will endure and burn them here. How important is your president, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, to the morale of Ukrainians fighting on the front lines like you? Good question. I have uh, admit that until uh, February 24th, when the war started, I have uh, his critic. He didn't many things that I didn't approve of. Uh, his support after being elected fell from 75% to 25% in uh, end of January. However, at the end of February, his approval rating was more than 90%. He has done a lot of race morale and get international support. He is now famous and well-liked by people all over the world. He motivates us and helps by giving daily updates about the situation in Ukraine. Yes, uh, uh, he just does that his leader of the state should do. Yes, he is not a professional commander. He is not a professional. But he inspired his team to make the right decision. Also, I just want to make it clear that, he's, that the Russian army is not war with the Ukrainian army. This is war with the Ukrainian people. What are your hopes for your country looking ahead? That my country will be a prosperous and strong state. I want to go back to my life before the war, and I hope that nothing like it will ever happen again. I know that as we rebuild, we can make Ukrainian and even better country than it was before. I hope for this. What can Americans do to help? I, like many of my fellow citizens, I am grateful for the help from the United States. America is our closest ally. And the assistance that we received bring us closer to victory. To ensure the safety of our civilians, we argue Americans to consider a few of the options. They can't introduce a no-fly zone. However, this will quickly result in a direct clash between the U.S. Army and enemy forces. In addition, providing air defense equipment, bulletproof vest, and night vision equipment, uh, thermal um, major equipment would really help us. Lastly, they could also keep tracing and sanction against their terrorists. Nikolai, is there anything else that you think our audience should know about the war in Ukraine before we let you go? Today, uh, as we discuss this war, uh, the terms of the settlement are being debated. I don't know what the final agreement will look like and what the borders will be drawn, but I am sure that Ukraine must restore his territorial integrity to the borders of 2013. And if we are lucky, Putin's regime will end and uh, he will be held accountable. 
also, if we didn't already know, Ukrainian provides food for hundreds of millions of people all around the world. And the continuing of this crisis increased the likelihood of the mine this year. So hopefully this conflict will be end soon and the uh, settlements will be favorable to Ukraine. In conclusion, glory to Ukraine, glory to heroes, glory to, nation, to the nation, death to the enemies. Slava Ukraini. Thank you so much, Nikolai, for joining us. Geron Slava. Thank you a lot. Thanks for listening to Warriors in Their Own Words. If you have any feedback, please email the team at kharbaugh at evergreenpodcast.com. We're always looking to improve the show. For updates and more, follow us on Twitter at team underscore Harbaugh. And if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to rate and review. Warriors in Their Own Words is a production of Evergreen Podcasts in partnership with The Honor Project. Our producer is Declan Roars. Bridget Coyne is our production director, and Sean Rule Hoffman is our audio engineer. Special thanks to Evergreen executive producers Joan Andrews, Michael DeAloya, and David Moss. I'm Ken Harbaugh, and this is Warriors in Their Own Words. This is Peter. And this is Tom. We want to tell you guys a little bit about our podcast. Tom and I met in college, became best friends, and then teachers almost 20 years ago. Sometimes school just does not allow us to elaborate on the topics that we find interesting, like the real shark attacks that inspired the movie Jaws, or the real historical context to Indiana Jones artifacts. Where does cereal come from? Or are zombies real? Does Ben Franklin really deserve to be on a $100 bill? On our podcast, just like in our class, there are no stupid questions. Just two friends having lighthearted conversation about history, pop culture, and the context of current events. Listen to History Teachers Talking Podcast from Evergreen Network, anywhere you get your podcasts.